Hi, and welcome to another video on introductory statistics. In this particular video, we're going to focus on what we're calling discrete random variables. Uh, particularly, we're going to talk about binomial distributions, a special type of discrete random variable. You'll recall from the very beginning of the course that we have discrete and continuous as two types of quantitative or numerical variables. And specifically, the discrete variable was the variable that we used when we had a whole number value for our variable. Continuous was used for measurements, so you could do continuous variables like 22.2, 22.25, 22.257, 6.778, um, that kind of thing that it can keep going forever and ever, but discrete is a whole number value. Uh, and so that's specifically everything that we're going to talk about in this chapter. Uh, this chapter is all about probabilities too, so this is a continuation of what we did in our previous video. Uh, it's a shorter chapter, and there will be a lot of similarities here that we had in the previous chapter. Uh, I hope you're ready with your formula card, your calculator, and your lecture notes. We will be using especially the formula card and the calculator a lot in this section, and you'll want to take good notes on how to do all of that as well so that you can fly through the homework. And so let's just jump in. We start off and we're all ready looking at something that looks very familiar from the previous chapter. Uh, so this is a discrete random variable distribution. You'll notice that the variable itself is all whole number values, and then our probabilities happen to follow exactly what we said they followed in the previous chapter. Um, because this is still a probability distribution, it's just one for a discrete random variable. So all of our probabilities always have to be between 0 and 1, just like last time, and the sum of all of the probabilities has to be 1, just like last time. So when we add these together, we always expect to get 1. There may be some rounding error. Uh, here there's not, but if you had a lot more decimal places, a lot more significant digits, you might get some rounding error. Uh, and then we also peaked last time into this idea of the expected value for discrete random variables, so the value you expect to get on average. And we didn't use this formula, although we looked at this formula, we particularly used the calculator, and that's what I want you to use this time, but I am going to do an example of how to compute this by hand, um, and how to compute this by hand even. Uh, so we will jump into that. Remember in chapter 2, when we talked about mean and standard deviation, and we talked about what this capital letter sigma meant. It means to add all of these things up. Um, to add them up first, we've got to do this stuff, though. Uh, so we have a column for our x. Our column for our x is always going to be that first column, our actual variable, and then we have a column for our p of x, and then we would just make a third column for x times p of x and add those all up, and what our sum would be would be our mean. Um, here it's much more complicated because then we'd need another column for our x minus mu, um, so we would find out our mu here, and we would need another column to have x minus our mu, um, and then so that would be our fourth column. Then we would need a fifth column for our x minus mu squared, and then we would need a sixth column for our x minus mu squared times uh, the p of x. Oops, that's that doesn't really look like p, um, but the p of x, I'm going to have it much neater writing on the next slide, although it's still not neat because my handwriting is not neat. Um, and then uh, once we have x minus mu squared times p of x um, in our sixth column, we have to sum all of those values up, and uh, then we have to take the square root. <laughs> so there's a lot of work to doing this, and actually this is about the simplest probability distribution we could ever hope for, uh, but I've, I've done it for this one. So you'll notice um, that we have the same x values as our previous slide and the same p of x values, and then we do a column for x times p of x so that we can get our mean value, um, and when we do that, 0 times 0 0.5 gives me 0. 1 times 0.4 gives me 0.4, and 2 times 0.1 gives me 0.2. And if I add this column together, 0 plus 0.4 plus 0.2, I get 0.6, and that is my mean. And now I can take all of these x values 
and individually subtract the 0.6 from them, the mean from them, to get my fourth column. And 0 minus 0 0.6 is going to give me negative 0.6. Um, 1 minus 0 0.6 is 0 0.4. 2 minus 0 0.6 is 1.4. And now I'm going to square this whole column. So negative 0.6 gets squared and it becomes 0.36. Uh, be sure if you're doing this in the calculator to include the negative in the parentheses before you square or it will give you a negative answer. And every, every squared number, whether negative or positive, is going to give you a positive or zero if you square zero answer. Um, and so 0.4 squares 0.16, 1.4 squares 1.96. We still have to, and this is where my handwriting is really bad, um, but that's an x right there. It doesn't really look like one. Um, so um, x minus mu squared times p of x, uh, if, you're, if you want to see it more plainly written, we're doing this stuff after the sigma all here. Um, and so uh, when we take the 0.36, um, squared and multiply it by, this time we're multiplying it by the probabilities, so 0.36 times half we get 0.18, um, and then 0.16 times 0.4 we get 0.064, and then the 1.96 times 0.1 we get 0.196, and then when we add these together we get 0.44, um, so if we, the point, the the third um, digit past the decimal um, is going to fall out because 4 and 6 add together to be 10. And so we'll carry the 1 up here, um, and that 0 can just kind of fall off. And so that gives us exactly 0.44. And so we put that in here. Um, that then becomes our sum. But we need to take the square root of the 0.44. Um, so the square root of the 0.44 gives us 0.6633. Um, so we have 0 0.6 and 0.663 or 0.6633, um, but we could have done all of this much more easily on the calculator. So let's go ahead and do it on the calculator this time. And uh, so I think I already have it in the calculator. I think I cheated. You're going to see where I cheated um, and let the, the calculator do the arithmetic for me for all of my columns. You'll, you'll see. I, I let that happen. Um, but we do have 0, 1, 2 and L1, and we have 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0 0.1 and L2. And so now, following the calculator instructions, this is straight off your formula card, by the way. So hopefully you have it handy. And so we press the stat key, scroll to the calculate, um, hit 1 for 1 var stats, and I want L1 for my list and I want L2 for my frequency list, and then that will give me the mean that I had previously of 0.6, and the standard deviation that I had previously of 0.663 or 6633. Uh, so I'm getting all the exact same answers as I had with the by hand method in a fraction of the time. Um, 0.6 63 or 0.6 and 0.6633. And so that is um, pretty much how we will do the discrete random variable distribution and then we'll jump into the binomial distribution. So in order for something to qualify as a binomial distribution, we have three things that must be met. Um, number one, there has to be a set number of trials in. Um, and so that's pretty common anyway. Um, and then number two, the name of course, the binomial, comes from having two. Uh, so there can only be two possible outcomes. You're either a success or a failure. And the word success isn't always a positive thing in this context. So it could be like having cancer. It's the variable that we're concerned about, um, the variable we're working the problem for, the variable uh, the way the f problem's phrased that we want to find the solution to or the probability of, that is what we'll define as a success. And then the opposite of that, the complement probability of that, is going to be uh, how we define our failure. And success, its probability will be P, and the failure probability will be Q. And I've already mentioned that they're complements of each other because they're going to add together to be one. Really, they have to because if there are only two possible outcomes, and we know the sum of the outcomes is always one, then these two outcomes have to add together to be one. And then the third and last thing is that these trials 
are all independent of each other and repeated identically, which means that P and Q are going to be constantly the same from trial to trial to trial. And uh, so the P and Q won't be identical to each other as I have here, although there will be two of them, but they will be, um, P will be identical from trial to trial to trial, and Q will be identical from trial to trial to trial. Uh, so here, we have our P is 0.4, which means our Q would be 0.6, um, but we don't actually need Q in this particular problem. We want to find uh, the probability that X equals A, and the reason I'm showing you this is so that we know not to use the formula on the formula card and to instead use the binomial PDF. Um, P would be appropriate here because it's exact. Uh, there's also binomial CDF, and we'll do examples with CDF as well. CDF is when you have several numbers together, so you don't have x exactly equal to a, but you have x um, less than or equal to a particularly. It's going to be this number or fewer, so that would be less than or equal to a. So how could we do this problem um, it, it turns out that this part of the problem is particularly a bear. Um, so here we have 4 choose 2, so our n would be 4 and our a would be 2. Um, when you do 4 choose 2, you have to do 4 factorial over 2 factorial um, times 4 minus 2 factorial. And if it's been a long time since you've had algebra, you might not remember what this exclamation point even means. Um, and it is called a factorial. And what 4 factorial means is that it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And so that 4 times 3 would be 12, and then times 2 would be 24, and then times 1 isn't going to change anything. Um, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 would be 5 factorial, uh, and so you would just take what you had, I think we said 24, um, and you would multiply it by 5, and you can see um, how it gets larger and larger and larger uh, very quickly. And so 2 factorial is 2 times 1, 0 factorial you would think would be zero because if you try to follow the logic, but it's actually got a special definition of one. So zero factorial is defined to be one for some odd reason, and uh, but the rest of them all follow that you take the number and you multiply it down to one. Uh, and we don't have to do that because our calculator will do it for us, and our calculator will do all these things as well, but even even letting our calculator do that work for us is going to be much harder and more room for error than just using this binomial PDF function. But let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we will do it quote unquote by hand, but really we're kind of um, already cheating. So we want to do 4 choose 2. Um, that's our first part. And so what we do there is we type in 4 and then we hit the math key and we go to probability which makes sense. And then you see NCR, that, um, that's like our NCA. Um, so we're going to hit option 3 because we want to use option 3. And you can see I have 4 and then choose, and I want to choose 2. And then to get out of this, you see how the arrow is flashing? Uh, we just press the arrow to get out of it. And then um, I'm just going to press enter here uh, to see what that is. I think we said it was 24. Four. Oh, it's 6. Oh, oh, 4 factorial was 24, but we're dividing by 2 factorial times 4 minus 2 factorial, which is going to be 2 times 2, or 4, um, and so all of that together ends up giving us 6. Uh, see, I would have made a mistake right off the bat using this if I were trying to do it in my head. Um, so let's do the whole thing function, and then we'll do the whole binomial PDF function as well. So the whole function, I'm just going to do second enter so I don't have to do that um, math again, and then times, and then our probability is 0.4, so 0 0.4, um, and then, oh wait, I want to do to the power of, and this caret key does to the power of. It turns out our power is squared, right? Let's see, yeah, because x is a, so everywhere we see x, we're putting, our, uh, everywhere we see a, we're putting our x of 2. And uh, so I could have used the squared key here, uh, but 
I can always use the power of. And you notice that it's going to keep writing up here in the exponent as well, unless I do the arrow key. Um, and then I want to do Q. Oh, so we did need Q. Well, Q is the complement of P, so 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6. So I'm just going to do 0.6 and then to the power of, and that will be 4 minus 2. And I'm just going to write it in there. Um, and because it's all raised to the power, I don't need parentheses because I can tell it's, it's going to do it as the subtraction first and then the exponent. So uh, if I had more stuff, I would arrow again, and, um, but I don't actually have more stuff. Uh, so we could have made a mistake anywhere in here and we would have gotten the wrong answer. Uh, but with binomial PDF, there are a lot less places to make mistakes. And so to get to binomial PDF, we do the second key and then DISDR, which is the VAR. So second, and then this key right here. And hopefully every time I'm working these problems on the calculator, you're doing them along with me. And if you need to pause the video, pause the video uh, and work them along with me. The binomial PDF is going to be option A. I'm scrolling from the bottom, but you can scroll from the top if you want to. Um, or you could have hit alpha A. Um, I've already done this one, you can see, because I have 4 for N um, and 0.4 for P and 2 for X. So I've already gotten all of it in there just like we need it and it is PDF because it's exactly equal um, if we had had this is the simplest type of problem by the way exactly equal if we'd had CDF um, I like to draw a number line every almost every time we have CDF because um, or at least think of the number line uh, every time we have CDF and think of how it would fall on the number line to make sure that I'm really doing it right because this number or fewer is the only thing that CDF can do. It can't do this number or more. Um, so drawing a number line helps there, but we'll, we'll do examples of that in just a second. Um, hitting enter, I got exactly the same thing. And this uh, binomial PDF is faster, especially if you get a harder problem. And uh, it, you're so much less likely to make mistakes because if you get in right, and you get P right, and you get X right, and it'll probably give you error messages if you put anything but a whole number here and a whole number here, and it probably will give you an error message if you put anything less than zero or more than one here. Um, so this will kind of, this won't give you an error message, um, except maybe on here it would, but you could put the wrong things here easily, any wrong things, and it would not give you an error message. Um, and I'm not sure if you put a non-whole number value, certainly if you put a, yeah, probably if you put a non-whole number value, non-positive integer here, um, or um, a non-positive integer here, it would, it would probably get mad. Uh, so let's do, let's do a couple more of these. So this one is very similar. Uh, find the probability of exactly four heads and five coin tosses. Um, so that's going to be our PDF. And so we will do second DISDR and then PDF because it says exactly four. Uh, now we have five coin tosses. So our number of trials is going to be five. Our probability of success Half the time we should get heads and half the time tails. So um, here half is our P and then our X would be exactly four, so four. And then we get our answer, easy as pie. Uh, and this next one is not quite as easy because we're starting to get into where we need the uh, CDF. So four or fewer, CDF is this number or fewer. I went ahead and drew a number line for this one, although I don't always um, draw number lines for these uh, because um, four or fewer is exactly the way that CDF is defined, this number or fewer. So we know this number has to be four. Um, and then we do it like we did last time. Our N is five and our uh, P is one half. So we We'll do second DISTR, scroll up from the bottom. This time, though, 
We're stopping at CDF because it's four or fewer. If we did PDF, we would get a, a value that's smaller because it would do exactly four. But what we want is the value for exactly four and the value for exactly three and the value for exactly two and the value for exactly one and the value for exactly zero and then we add up all those values. So this would be five different calculations and adding those five different calculations together. So essentially, if we did this by hand, it would be five times the work of this one um, by hand. Uh, so this one by hand might not have seemed so bad, but then when you get to this one by hand, it is five times the amount of work. Um, so we want by them CDF, uh, five is our number of trials. 0.5 or 1 half, we could have typed in 1 divided by 2 there, and that would have been fine. And 4 or fewer, so 4 is our x here, uh, and then this gives us a very large answer. Um, actually, if we had computed the probability of uh, it being 5 and subtracted that from 1, that would have also given us our answer, because we know that all of these probabilities together have to add to be 1, and because we're dealing with a discrete random variable, we know they all have to be whole number values. We can't have anything that's um, half of a number or uh, anything that's not an integer value. And we will do one that's a little bit harder. Uh, here we want to find less than 4, so not 4 or fewer now, and so now uh, do we use 4 as our x or do we not use 4? This is where I really would just take the time to do a very rough sketch. You don't have to do it as neatly as I did, although you may have it much neater than I am um, because I'm, uh, I struggle with being neat. Uh, but uh, we want four less than 4 and less than 4 um, means not 4. Um, but it does mean 3 uh, and everything less than 3. And because we only deal with whole number values, we're not dealing with any of these fractions that are between 4 and 3. Our first possible value is 3 because it has to be less than 4 and it has to be a whole number value. So we shade everything between 3 and 0. It can be 0. You could get 0 heads in five coin tosses, in other words. Um, so you could get zero, one, two, or three heads in five coin tosses and still be less than four. And so less than four is the same thing as three or fewer, so we will still use by name CDF, and this time we will use three instead of four. I'm just going to do second enter and change that four to a three, and that will give us our answer for this one. And then um, the last example is the hardest one. You'll have several of these though. Uh, so we'll go through it in some detail. This one says more than two. And we don't have a function that does more than. We, do, we have a function that does this number or fewer. Um, but like I was mentioning with the complement earlier, we can think of this as a complement. So let's go ahead and shade what is more than two, and then we'll think of the complement and we'll use the complement to our advantage. So more than two does not include two. Um, it starts at three. So the, the smallest value that's more than two, that's an integer, is three. Um, it includes three, four, and five. Um, so that's actually what we want to find is shaded here in pink. Shaded in brown is the complement of what we want to find. Um, so 0, 1, or 2 is exactly the opposite because remember everything has to be a whole number value. We can find 0, 1, or 2. That's possible. 0, 1, or 2 is the same thing as 2 or fewer. So it is possible to use binom CDF to find 0, 1, or 2. Um, and what we want to find is the 3, 4, or 5, and we know that all of this has to be 1 because of the first thing that we talked about, the sum of the entire probability distribution has to be 1. Um, so what we really want is the complement of it being less than or equal to 2, 2 or fewer. Uh, and so we, we want to do 1 minus, and we can do this all in one line on the calculator. So we can do 1 minus, and then we can do our second DISDR to get to binome CDF. And then we just put in, um, and we do for 2 or fewer. And so let's do this on the 
calculator now, we will do 1 minus, and then I'm going to do second DISTR, um, stop it by num CDF, and 5, 1 half, and 2. Wow, it gives me exactly one half. Did I do that right? Five, one half, and two. So uh, it's exactly one half right here. That is interesting. And so that's how you would do these with complements. You, I would absolutely draw these. I, there's no way I would do these without drawing a picture because I would get them wrong if I did them without drawing a picture. Um, so that's definitely my recommendation to everyone is to draw a number line. You don't have to label every number. Um, you can just label the numbers that matter where they, where your um, shading starts and stops is a good idea to label those. And then determine what it is you want. Determine the complement. Um, uh, if you need the complement, because if, it's, if, if you're trying to use CDF and the thing that you want isn't a number or fewer, then definitely use the complement to get that, um, but don't forget when you do that to subtract from one. And then uh, the last little thing is pretty easy. This is a formula on your formula card as well, and it says that the mean of the binomial distribution is the number of trials that you have times the probability. And if we look at all of these that we just did, we have five trials um, and we have a probability of one half. And so we would just do five times one half, and that would be our mean of 2.5. If we want to get the standard deviation, the formula is definitely more complicated, but um, five times one half, um, and then times Q. Uh, here it's also one half. Um, if we looked all the way back to our first binomial experiment example, um, that was 0.4, and the complement of 0.4 would have been 0.6. Um, so you're not going to always have P and Q be the same thing, but here you do have that happen. Um, so N times P times Q all under the square root gives us our standard deviation of the binomial distribution. So here we have 1.12 is our standard deviation of the binomial distribution. So that's the last example of the types of problems you'll see in this particular section. Uh, and then as you go through your homework, be sure to use your formula card, especially the calculator shortcuts column and your calculator functions. We'll be using one var stats L1 comma L2 to find the mean and standard deviation of discrete random variables that aren't binomial distributions. Uh, remember that if we're trying to find the mean and standard deviation from binomial distributions, we use these two formulas. So um, that one bar stats trick is only for non-binomial distributions. Uh, and then we'll also use binom CDF and binom PDF. Uh, and then we'll use these two formulas as well that don't really have a calculator shortcut. But it's not, those aren't too bad. Uh, as far as formulas go. Uh, use your lecture notes on your homework. They will be extremely valuable, especially if you've written down notes on top of them. You can use your textbook. Uh, there's some really nice examples in the textbook that might be helpful for discussions, for instance, um, and Newton instruction too, especially if you get stuck. Feel free, if you feel comfortable after this video, to skip the Newton instruction at the beginning uh, for especially this chapter. But if you get stuck on anything, go and look at that Newton instruction because it's going to be catered to the problem that you're working on. And then if all of these things fail, always on the homework, especially send me a message, send me a screenshot of that homework problem you're working on, and I will get back with you. And thank you so much, and good luck on working on this particular chapter. I hope that you'll enjoy it.